Hey friends, tonight we're going to unravel a subtle everyday mystery that lives right in your own hands. Picture yourself at your desk, the first rays of daylight just starting to slip into the room and you're reaching for that first cup of coffee. Or maybe it's late in the evening and you're relaxing while scrolling through your phone. Right there in front of you sits a simple object. Your brain sends the command, your arm stretches forward and your fingers close around it. In that instant, without the slightest conscious effort, you've made a choice, a decision that instantly links you with nine out of every ten people on earth. You pick a side. For most of us, it's the right hand that does the job, leaving the left hand waiting quietly in the background. That effortless action, this instinctive preference, is the final chapter in a story that began millions of years ago. A saga of survival, written in ancient bones, marked into worn teeth and traced in faint handprints left on cave walls long ago. But why such a strong bias toward the right hand? What evolutionary storm drove our ancestors down this single path while hardly any other animal followed? And what does it mean for the small group, the 10%, living in a world built almost entirely for the other hand, with evidence buried in fossils and revealed in modern brain scans? Tonight we're going to piece together this extraordinary puzzle. Chances are you've already made this decision a hundred times today, yet noticed it not once. Before we dive in, take a second to like this video and subscribe, only if you truly enjoy this kind of content. That one small click tells the algorithm that serious, thoughtful storytelling still matters. And for me, it's an incredible sign of support. I always love seeing where you're all watching from. So share in the comments your location and what time it is for you. Now dim the lights, maybe switch on a fan for that gentle background hum. And let's ease into tonight's exploration together. That tiny act, lifting a cup feels automatic, almost predestined, yet it reveals one of the deepest and most uniquely human patterns we carry. Around 90% of people on the planet are right-handed. This isn't like tossing a coin, or like a cat swatting at a toy with one paw or the other, which tends to balance out evenly in their species. For us, it's a universal cross-cultural biological reality. It's a fact that connects a stockbroker in New York a rice farmer in the Mekong Delta, and an uncontacted tribesperson in the Amazon. Nearly all of us live in a right-handed world. The bias runs so deep that it's woven straight into our languages. Take the word ambidextrous. We use it to mean skilled with both hands, but its Latin roots literally translate to right-handed on both sides. The word dexter means right but also skillful or fortunate. In other words, the idea of perfect two-handed skill was imagined as simply having two right hands, which raises the question, do we learn this preference passing it down through culture and habit, or is it far older, a design etched into us by our ancient ancestors? If it were purely cultural, you'd expect at least one society somewhere in history to have favoured the left hand Yet no such culture has ever existed. The ratio is stubbornly the same across every era and every continent. That points to something deeper, not custom, but evolution. Clue number one, scratches on ancient teeth. To find the answer, we can't begin in a modern genetics lab or under a brain scanner. We have to step back in time to the thin line where human and animal blurred to a cave high above a river valley in what is now Croatia. There, in the fossilized remains of Neanderthals, we uncover the first physical clue. Not in a weapon, not in a tool, but etched directly into their teeth. A permanent record of ordinary work, a silent marker of which hand did the task. The cave air is damp and cool, carrying the scent of wood smoke and earth. You crouch near its entrance, afternoon shadows stretching long across the stone. In front of you is an essential but exhausting chore, cleaning a fresh animal hide. Messy, difficult, but vital for clothing, shelter and bindings, 
lifelines for surviving Europe's unpredictable climate. The hide is slippery, heavy and awkward. To scrape it clean, you need tension. Both hands are required, one pulling the skin taut, the other cutting away with a tool. With no clamps and no helper, you use a trick passed down for generations. You bite the hide with your front teeth, pulling back to stretch it tight. Your jaw becomes a third hand. In your stronger hand, you grip your main tool, not a crude rock, but a carefully shaped flint scraper, part of what archaeologists call the Mousterian toolkit. Carefully crafted by your clan, each flake was struck from stone with practiced precision to create a razor-sharp edge. You tug the hide with your left hand, scraping steadily with your right. The motion is steady, practiced, almost rhythmic, but sometimes your focus slips, or you hit a knot of sinew. The tool jerks off course, skidding from hide to tooth. There's no real pain, just a gritty scrape and mild annoyance. You adjust your grip and keep working. The mistake fades from your memory, but not from your teeth. Each slip leaves behind a microscopic scar, and over a lifetime hundreds of these faint scratches pile up, recording a permanent pattern in enamel. Fast forward 130,000 years. A scientist peers through a microscope at your fossilized incisors. The marks are still there. Because physics hasn't changed, they can reconstruct your motions with certainty. Scratches slanting from upper left to lower right could only have come from a right hand moving across the anchored hide. Left-handed scraping would leave the reverse angle, and the result is clear, not just for you, but across dozens of Neanderthal fossils from Croatia to Spain. Again and again, the scratches tell the same story. They were right-handed. This isn't speculation. It's behavior, permanently fossilized, an echo of a gesture a ghost of preference preserved in enamel. Of course, scientists love nuance. Some argue that maybe it only reflects one task, one technique, that happened to be easier with the right hand. Could it really prove population-wide handedness? It's a fair challenge, but the sheer consistency of the evidence is hard to ignore. It suggests that the right hand bias wasn't a cultural quirk of Homo sapiens alone. It was a trait we shared with our closest relatives, the Neanderthals. Our story of handedness, it turns out, stretches deeper than we once believed. Sharing this pattern with our extinct cousins is fascinating, but the journey doesn't end in that Croatian cave. To trace its roots further, we must go back even deeper in time to another site, one known as Clue Number 2, the Pit of Bones. Deep in the rugged Atapuerca mountains of northern Spain lies a cave system that holds one of the most astonishing and puzzling treasures in human history. Its name is Cima de los Huesos, translated starkly as the Pit of Bones, and the name is no exaggeration. At the base of a 43-foot vertical shaft rests the largest and oldest concentration of early human fossils ever uncovered. A tangled mass of skeletons, at least 28 individuals, who all met their end in this shadowed place some 500,000 years ago. These were neither Neanderthals nor modern humans like us. They belonged to an older, more mysterious species, Homo heidelbergensis, broad, powerfully built people with heavy brow ridges and large faces, yet with brains that rivaled ours in size. As a species, they stand at a pivotal crossroad in our evolutionary journey, a crucial ancestor positioned between what came before and what would later branch into Neanderthals in Europe and Homo sapiens in Africa. In other words, they are our shared grandparents, the trunk of the family tree, from which two great lineages would diverge. And within that pit in Spain, amid the jumbled bones, their teeth whisper a familiar tale. When researchers examined the incisors from Cima de los Huesos, they discovered the same microscopic scratch patterns once seen on Neanderthal teeth. 
diagonal striations slanting from upper left to lower right, a clear, unmistakable signature of a right hand holding a tool while the left hand anchored the work. This discovery was monumental. It didn't just confirm the Neanderthal story, it pushed the timeline of human-handedness far deeper. Half a million years old, these scratches triple the age of the trait, proving that right-hand bias was not a recent quirk or regional oddity. It was already a defining feature of our lineage, firmly established long before our own species existed. A tradition, if you will, an ancient family habit passed through generations of humanity. But the site itself raises another haunting question. Why were 28 individuals deposited at the bottom of that shaft? Archaeologists still debate fiercely. Was it a tragic accident? A whole group falling to their deaths? Unlikely. Was it simply a place to discard bodies? Possible. Yet there's another, more tantalizing theory. Among the bones, researchers found a single extraordinary artifact. A finely crafted hand axe made of reddish quartzite, a stone not found anywhere else in the cave, nicknamed Excalibur. This lone tool seems to have been placed deliberately. Its presence has led some to propose that Cima de los Huesos may represent the earliest known funeral rite in human history, a symbolic offering, a half-million-year-old gesture of respect for the dead. Whatever the truth... One fact remains unshakable. The people laid to rest, or discarded, in this pit lived lives of skill and dexterity, and like us, they performed those skilled tasks overwhelmingly with their right hands. Half a million years, a span so vast that it's almost beyond human comprehension to find a behavioural trait unchanged. To find a behavioural trait unchanged across such a gulf of time is astonishing. Yet the trail doesn't end in Spain. To uncover the next clue, we must leave Europe behind and journey to the birthplace of humanity itself. Clue number three. The first tool makers. Our path leads us to the great rift valley of East Africa, to a sun-baked canyon that has revealed some of the most important fossils ever found. This is Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, often called the cradle of humankind. Here, erosion cuts through the earth like a blade, exposing layer upon layer of geological history, each stratum a page in the planet's book. And in these layers, legendary paleoanthropologists like the Leakey family unearthed the bones of our earliest ancestors, hominins, taking their first steps toward becoming human. Among them was a species known as Homo habilis, the handyman. Living here 1.8 million years ago, they earned their name for a very good reason. They were among the first in our lineage, consistently linked with tool-making. Their tools were crude but revolutionary. The older one industry simple flakes and sharp-edged cores struck from stone, not the symmetrical hand axes of later species, but rough, functional edges that changed everything. For the first time, our ancestors could slice through hide, butcher carcasses, and crack bones for marrow. It was the dawn of technology, an invention that would set Homo on its extraordinary trajectory. And here, among these early toolmakers, we find our oldest clue yet, scientists examining the teeth of a Homo habilis specimen, known simply as OH65, discovered something remarkable. On its 1.8 million year old enamel lay the same diagonal scratches we've seen before, the same telltale right handed signature. The implication is staggering. It suggests that handedness may be as ancient as technology itself, that from the very moment our ancestors began shaping the world with tools, they were already favouring one hand. Of course, caution is necessary. This conclusion rests on a single fossil. Was this one individual an outlier in a balanced population? 
or does it truly represent the whole species even deeper? Was Homo habilis a direct ancestor of ours, or a side branch on the evolutionary tree? If they were only cousins, then right-hand bias may have evolved twice, once in their line and once in ours. But either way, the evidence hints at a profound connection, that our ingenuity and our hand preference may have emerged together, locked in a feedback loop, where making tools reinforce the dominance of one hand. A lifetime of repeated motion left scratches we can still read today, but scratches on teeth reveal only a single task. To truly confirm a lifelong bias, we need more. We must turn to the body itself, and for that we look to a principle known as Wolf's Law. Clue number four, a skeleton story, Wolf's Law. Bone, as it turns out, is not a dead scaffold. It is living tissue, constantly reshaping itself in response to stress. Wolf's Law, formulated by a 19th century German surgeon, states that bones grow stronger, denser and thicker in the areas that endure the most strain. You can see this in action today. Look at a professional tennis player. From childhood, they've spent thousands of hours swinging a racket with the same arm. The result? That dominant arm grows visibly more robust, thicker, denser, and uniquely shaped by the forces placed upon it. Their non-dominant arm, though still strong and athletic, is mostly just along for the ride. The difference this creates is dramatic, not only in muscle mass, but deep within the bones themselves. X-rays and density scans show that the cortical bone, the hard outer shell of the dominant arm, can be up to 20% thicker and hold as much as 40% more mineral content than its opposite. In other words, the skeleton literally reshapes itself to endure the strain of a lifetime of work. Paleoanthropologists apply this same principle to the ancient record. When they're fortunate enough to recover both left and right arm bones from the same fossil individual, they can measure length, thickness, and the attachment points where muscles once pulled, and again and again, when this is done with Neanderthal remains, the result is unmistakable. The right arm shows far greater strength and density than the left. The humerus, the long bone of the upper arm, often displays the clearest imbalance, closely mirroring the asymmetry we see in modern athletes like tennis players. This provides a powerful second line of proof that backs up the story told by scratched teeth. Neanderthals weren't just using their right hand for one specialized task. They relied on it for most of the grueling work of daily life, enough that it physically reshaped their skeletons. Of course, finding such complete fossil sets is an extraordinary rarity. The journey from a living body to a preserved skeleton is brutal and chaotic. After death, bones can be scattered by scavengers, trampled underfoot, 